In this screencast, I'll be going over basically some a minimum update, first of all. And then since we have a minimum update, then we're going to need minimum size of update. We're going to need a max number of updates of that size in order to not need any more updates of that size. We might need smaller updates. Um, and this is in the paper how they lead up to their uh, minimum margin Mira, which is the improved version. So first of all, we're going to assume basically that the best one is better than the correct one by at least negative beta. Okay? So there exists BR such that BR, um, and BR, remember, is the rth vector dotted with the point x. So BR is, I say BR minus BY is greater than beta. I don't know why they put it the other way around. All right. So we've got a negative margin of beta. Um, where beta is in this range. And then the update is at least this amount. They say in this range, because if uh, if beta is bigger than 2r squared, then they've got that maximum update of 1. Now the proof, I'm just going to show you. Um, first of all, let's suppose we only update um, we only update this one R. So we only update uh, M R and M Y. Then, um, hmm. Okay, so if I recall correctly, it was one half a the sum of the tau squareds, so tau s um, plus the sum of the b's, sum of b s times tau s. And to make this small, when we have a bigger value of b, we want to make those taus more negative. That looks good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to be updating these two vectors, which means all the tau's are going to be zero except for tau r and tau y. And then we're going to get this result, and then we'll figure out if we if we allow the other tau's to be non-zero, then tau y will be even bigger. So then. Um, Well, I guess their derivatives have to be negative of each other. And so we have a tau s. Um, sorry, no, the derivatives have to be the same. a tau s plus b s is equal to a tau. Um, I want those to be r's now. Those to be y's. <laughs> All right, so we want these to be equal, and they sum to zero. So if one is positive, the other is negative, and so what we get is that two hmm, a tau y um, equals br minus by, and we know that this is greater than or equal to beta. <coughs> okay? And so then we're just going to get that tau y is greater than or equal to um, this beta over 2a. And now a, recall, A is equal to the norm of x squared, right? And so 
this here has to be smaller than r squared, which means that this whole thing will be bigger than r squared. So this will be greater than or equal to beta. Right. There. I made the bottom possibly bigger, which makes that smaller. And so that's how you get the original inequality. Um, but what happens when we allow the other uh, other taus to be non-zero? Well, what's going to actually happen is that tau y can get even bigger. <coughs> Um, basically what we can do, so it's because this is convex and because we are minimizing oops, a convex function, With an affine constraint, that means basically affine means basically linear. All right, the sum of the taus equals zero. I guess that's totally linear since it's, since it's zero. Um, so we've got a convex function with an affine constraint. What we can do is only change um, two taus at a time. So So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to modify the TR and any of the other TSs um Right? So TR and any of the other TSs, where S is in Y. And in this way, we're going to make TR bigger, which means like a smaller negative number. And we'll make this TS somewhat negative. And then we're going to modify TR and TY as a pair. Or tau R and tau Y as a pair. And we're going to repeat. And so once we've made, when we modify these as a pair, that makes tau r smaller in size, right? And with this being smaller in size, um, this is negative, this is smaller in size, which means overall this is more positive, which means tau y will get bigger when we do our second step. So this always makes... how y bigger increase. And so we know we're approaching the minimum by just doing this two at a time, and we know that tau y is always going to increase. Um, so basically my intuition for this was that there's this part, which is making us want to make tau r big, and make, sorry, tau y big and positive, tau r big and negative. Yeah. And then there's this part, which kind of cancels that out. But this part, because, because this part has the squared, so if I can spread this out among several other ones, 
right? According to this, if I can spread this out of, over several other ones, this doesn't play as big a role. And so therefore, this, since this doesn't make, play as big a role, and this is trying to make tau y infinitely big, and tau r infinitely negatively big, um, this becomes more important relatively, and so there, therefore tau y will be bigger. And so here I just formally did that, <laughs> showed that that's true. All right, so now we know that the max number of updates, or so the size of the update is at least beta over 2r squared. Um, okay. So now we've got some beta, a game between 0 and 2r squared, and they get this result. Um, so a limited number, um, sorry, so this is the number of rounds in which this, this difference is bigger than beta, basically. <coughs> um, and so the number of rounds in which that occurs is going to be less than or equal to this, and this is just going to be Combining, we know we have a minimum update size, and we're going to combine that with theorem 7 from earlier, which says that the one norm is less than or equal to this. And so we know that um, so, so this is going to be hmm, okay, the sum t equals 1 to t of norm 1. This is going to be less than or equal to the number of updates that are bigger than it'll be less than or equal to the number of updates that are bigger than beta. Um, sorry, hold on. This will be greater than or equal to the number of updates of size beta or more times, sorry, the number of updates in which that was bigger than beta, the updates were size beta over 2r, 2r squared, and I need to multiply that by 2, because it's now the one norm, not just what, tau y. Um, All right, yeah, and so we're basically done. So this is less than or equal to 4 r squared over gamma squared. And so obviously the number has to be limited since this has to be less than that. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to get 4, move the r squareds, the 2s are going to cancel, move the r squareds up, move the beta to the bottom. 4 r to the 4th over beta gamma squared. has to be greater than or equal to the number of updates where there is a margin of that or more in the wrong direction. So there we go. Um, now one of the things that they point out here is that the number of updates goes to infinity as beta goes to 0, which, you know, since the updates are getting smaller and smaller, as beta gets smaller, I think that makes sense. So it doesn't necessarily eventually um, converge. Uh, this just makes sure that um, the, the updates get smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, so this is what they use to lead to their more aggressive version of this algorithm, which is where they're basically going to artificially increase beta so that it always converges. That's the idea. That's, that's it.